today i'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, you know the comparison between india and philippines uh, as an offshoring destination uh, uh, for accounting firms specifically uh, i am going to compare it from three parameters talent uh, availability ecosystem uh, and the third being the time zone uh, let me start with uh, you know uh, time zone first so the time zone of uh, of philippines is two and a half hours three hours worse than even you know the indian time zone which means they are three hours two and two and a half to three hours ahead of us which means typically we when we work with us clients canadian clients we end our shift at midnight which is about 1 a.m or 1 30 a.m india time their shift would typically end at 3 34 4 30 a.m in the morning which we typically call as a graveyard shift and it becomes difficult uh, in longer run to work in i mean even 1 a.m is difficult but still kind of these people are, are getting aligned to it and they have made up their mind that if you're working with american clients this is how it is but it becomes worse when it comes to philippines working with philippines um, talent um, philippine talents uh, for that matter has been great for australia for their back office the reason is they have work on the same time uh, the second point is about ecosystem so uh, uh, all the big fours have their presence in multiple cities in india and i'm talking about this this office is as global delivery center so this office is dedicatedly work for the us office or canada office or other other offices outside india uh, of course they have their offices in india for indian market as well uh, also uh, you know some of the large tech companies have their second largest offices in india so if you talk about google they have their big presence in multiple multiple cities in india we talk of amazon uh, building the second largest office in india salesforce has their second largest campus in india microsoft is building their largest data center in india so uh, these are some of the tech companies who have their large presence in india and india being the it hub has has tremendous amount of uh, 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 it presence of american companies already um, some of the fortune 500 companies have their back offices uh, in india as well some of the accounting tech companies like intuit and thomson reuters have their you know uh, uh, dedicated back office in india and this is the largest amount of talent that they have after their US in terms of headcounts. Um, some of the top 100 accounting firms who have dedicated office in India, they, they have come here and set up their own offices. So if you ask me, you know, BDO, RSM, Grant Thornton, Wipfley, Eisner Amper, Con Resnick, Crow, Citrine Cooperman, Mazar, uh, Vitham, all of them have dedicated office uh, in India and they have set up office in multiple cities in India and have dominating presence. You will see an uh, article every now and then for big four and large accounting firms who have their own office, uh, that they are expanding, they're back, taking more space, they're expanding to this city and setting up offices or they're hiring so many people. So this is a kind of phenomena. Uh, this is kind of, you know, which is going on since last seven, eight, ten years. But post-pandemic, it has just skyrocketed. Um, we at Integrity are partners to 30 of top 200 accounting firms. So we are also helping them in building their uh, offshore team and we are growing and we are helping them grow as well uh, and helping them build their offshore team. So this talks a little bit about, you know, how much ecosystem is growing, how much talent is available. Let me talk a little bit about talent development. So when it comes to talent development, it, you know, the, the direct question you ask is, uh, would I be able to find US CPAs? Would I be able to find EAs or US CMAs for that matter? Um, so uh, just to give you a glimpse of it is US CPA, you can now become US CPA sitting in India. You can give exams in India. You can become EA by sitting in India. You can become US CMA by become, sitting by giving your exams in India. So these three designations are truly becoming global, CPA, EA for that matter. The number have just multiplied. Uh, the number of people pursuing CPA, EA have just multiplied maybe five, seven times what it used to be before pandemic. A lot of institutes have come up who are coaching for CPA, EMA. I mean, Beckers and Surgeons and, and Glimes of the world have set up and, 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 and have partnered with a lot of people in India. Uh, uh, Miles is one of the prominent partner, prominent company providing CPA education as well and US CMA as well. So a lot of 
education companies, almost, I mean, two dozen of them we know uh, who have, you know, who are, are actually providing education for CPA, CMA, CIA, uh, CFE, US uh, CPA, uh, US CMA as well. So this is overall building of the whole ecosystem. And, um, and actually a lot of people are pursuing, previously pursuing US was not a main career. In last two years, this has changed. People after the graduation are pursuing this as their main career opportunity, building a career in US tax or finance industry. Um, when you compare this with uh, uh, Philippines, uh, I did a little bit of Google search. None of the top 100 accounting firms have their office in Philippines as a part of the global delivery center. I could be wrong here, but nothing came up in my research. Uh, I was looking for, can you become US CPA sitting in Philippines and nothing significant popped up uh, as well in my research. You can definitely say that I would be a little biased here. Well, I did a reasonable amount of research and, and I'm uploading this video and putting this links as well uh, for you to review. Uh, so, well, I did not, nothing came up in my research which could really vouch the ecosystem. Well, one thing I would like to say positive about Philippines as a nation is English education has been emphasized since the, the very beginning of their schooling. So that's where the quality of English in terms of communication, in terms of speak is, uh, that's where they have uh, an edge. And I would not say an edge, they have an early start, early head start, because English education has been very much emphasis in their primary education since their childhood, in their schooling. Uh, so that's where, you know, you'll see a lot of customer support, contact center, voice support center of multinational companies and outsourcing companies there. So they are good at customer support and voice support. Uh, India is, by the way, not far, I mean, not much behind. I mean, it, India is ahead only because of the sheer size of the nation and availability of the talent. So India is India has the second largest English speaking, con second largest English speaking country in the world after US. Um, India has the talent, but somewhere Philippines, uh, if you ask me, can compete would be on that front. On accounting side, I don't know US or Canada or UK they have any ecosystem through the through the through the research that I did. But do your research. I'm putting uh, some of the links for your review in the comment section of, of this video. And uh, that will really uh, help you understand uh, this better. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video was would be able to give you some insights on, on taking the decision. Thank you.